Tap a ten, oh, then baby. Tap a ten, little bush and bop. Tap a ten, a bop, boom, bop, cap a clam. Three, two, one, bro. Everybody, my name is Nick Murphy. I'm Mike Murphy. We are the Brothers Murphy. This is another yes. top 10 coming at you. Get ready for us to sling some hate. Not really. No. That's the thing, right? No, like, not really. like, this is top 10 games we've cooled on. So these are games that we've, we, we don't like as much as we used to. At one point, they were like the pinnacle. I wouldn't even for, say for, that. For, no. Well, some of these for, for a moment. Even yeah. at that moment, I was just like, this is the only thing I want to play. Yeah. And then now it's just like, yeah, they're cool. So we want to say that, like, this. I guess technically is a negative list, but like we don't like being negative. So like if you're looking for yeah. like a top 10 games we hate, this isn't that list. We're also it. probably never going to do that list because we just have no interest There's in it. too much energy to put towards something I don't Yeah, like, like why are you putting so much energy towards something you don't like? I don't get it. it makes I don't no care sense. about the clicks that much. God, that'd be a popular uh, video I'll be though. good. It would do real well We're not going to do that. We're going to talk about games that we... have cooled off for one reason. cooled off for... Yeah. And, yeah. and again, this not um, mean they're bad. A lot of these games we talk about, we still own. And still love. Um, and any of these yeah. games, I would play. Yeah, 100%. That's the thing we want to say at the start here. It's like, I would happily play any of these games yeah. at a convention and stuff. It's just not going to get played every day anymore. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. And some we, we're going to keep because we still like them, but just for whatever reason, we don't like them as much as we used to. So real quick, before we begin, because we might name a game that's your favorite game, thumb this video now so exactly. that when you're mad at us later, you'll have forgotten and then it's already thumbed up. Indeed. Cool. Indeed. Cool. Yeah. Should we start? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's start with our number 10s. So my number 10 is a game that I think is really cool. It's kind of a Civ themed game called Hadara. Where you're going to be getting our list. Yeah. yeah, you're going to be getting these cards, and uh, each of these cards that you buy is going to give you a boost up on one of four tracks. There's kind of like income, military, culture, agriculture, and then agriculture, yeah. and so you got to feed your people and stuff. And and the cool thing I enjoy about the game is that as you're getting these bumps in your tracks, you just kind of create this engine of of, of income and stuff, yeah. which is how you buy all your cards, and you get that several points throughout the game. As you get more military, you get to uh, get these little civilization tiles. You, you're exploring sure, around colonies or whatever colonizing yeah. and stuff yeah so it's all abstracted but it's like that's not great <laughs> and you can go in, and all these things all they do is just give you boosts on these tracks yeah. so it's all kind of abstract yeah. and stuff it has some sort of civ theming on it and this is a game that i really enjoy because of the way that it functions you have kind of phase a where people are simultaneously getting cards and phase b where you're kind of picking cards from discard piles uh in turn order and for me the thing is and I know there are some expansions out there. I just need more cards now. That's, I want that's, more things going on. And I know that some of the expansion stuff does provide that, but we don't have access to that. Yeah. So that's I just the reason need more why I now. didn't make my list because like, I know there's expansions out there that I do want to try. But at this point, I'm like, okay, I've seen everything this game offers. Yes, 100. And honestly, after like five or six plays, you've seen pretty much everything. You've I seen gave, every card, multiple which is times. fine. But yeah. it's one of those things where I was like, I'm pretty done with this in terms of if, if this stays like this. Yeah, so I know with some expansion stuff, you might get more cards, which might give variety. You might have the ability to spend your money or do different things. Maybe yeah. it'll be a new resource track type or something like that. I would, I, at this point, need a little something like that. So that's my number 10 is Hadara. Yeah. My number 10, it kind of falls in the same vein of like, cool, I've seen everything this game offers. Uh, and that is Rising 5. This is yeah, a game sure. that I... Is, is a really, really cool game that's run really by an neat. app. You also can run it without an app. You can have one person kind of being the app. But now it's run by an app. It's a co-op game. And there's essentially these like constellations or whatever, these symbols you're trying to get in a certain order. And the app is the one that randomizes that so you don't know what it is. So basically you're doing this stuff to rearrange these things. And then you can eventually like essentially take a picture of it with your with the app. You know and it'll tell you... If they're like, hey, this one is in this sequence and in the right place. This one is in the sequence, but it's in the wrong place. And then this one isn't in the sequence at all. So you're swapping you're these deducing, things in and out. Yeah. And it's a really cool deduction game. And you're basically going around fighting these monsters or whatever to get certain things so you yeah. can do other stuff. It's really, really cool. And it's, it's such a cool, cool concept yeah. that you have seen in like five plays. Yeah. And so it's it's very, very, very cool. And so when I first heard about it, I was like, we got to get this game. So we got the game. We were like, this is so cool. And we played it a bunch. And I played it like my roommate likes it. So we played it with him a bunch. And it was super, super cool. And we're like, this is awesome. And then after like five or ten plays, I was like, cool. It's nothing is it's different. It's the same, like, same idea. You have this riddle. You're trying to solve yeah. it and stuff. And that's neat. But well, yeah. on top of that, like you have all these monsters. You have these, these areas of the board that you can go to. And you have like these monsters on the area that you can go fight. But literally, you use every single card in every yeah. single game. So there's not even variety there. So it's like the sequence is always changing. And that part is cool. But nothing else changes. Yeah. 
and There's it's no just, surprise left. Yeah, yeah, and it's like this game is so desperate need of an expansion because then it could be cool. But like we got, we actually called this game a while ago because we were cool. Like cool, we saw everything we need to see. Yeah. But like I was so hyped on it when we first got it. And then kind of cooled pretty quick because I was like, this is still a good game, still really cool. Yeah. But like, I've seen, every, I've played it enough. I've seen everything yeah. I need to see. So that's our number 10, everybody. Let us know what you think of those straight away. And then uh, in the meantime, we'll get to our number nine. All right, my number nine is, is honestly, it's not really the game's fault. It's just a product of there's more of these kinds of games out there. And that is Railroad Inc. Railroad Inc is a roll and write that I still, to this game, again, Really love. We yeah. still have it. Not planning on getting rid of it. Absolutely adore it. But this was one of the first roll and rides we got. It was like this and Welcome, welcome to. to were yeah. like the two we had for a long time. And this yeah. game used to be like in my top 50. I don't even think it was in my top 100 the last time we did it when we did our top 100 mm. uh, last fall. Yeah. And again, I still really like Railroad Inc., but there are so many more roll and rides out there, and there's just right. a lot of other ones that I like more. So it's kind of made me cool on Railroad Inc. And again, I still enjoy playing it. I played it with some, with, um, a bunch of our followers a little while back, and it's still great. It's still very difficult in terms of like, you constantly are, are you're building out railways and highways, and you're doing that with the roll of these dice, but you have to put, whatever's rolled, you have to put that in your yeah. network somewhere. You can't mitigate them really. And so it's very like excruciating in a good way that a lot of good roll rights are. It's still wonderful. It's great, I love it. But it's just at this point, there's been so many, like when we first got it, I was so hot on it because it was like one of two rolling rights we had. Yeah. And now we have like 20. So like, and I still love it, but there's so many other ones that it's made me cool on this one. Because at this point, I'm like, okay, it's nowhere near my favorite roll and write. It's pretty basic, but I do really like it. But Railroad Inc. Yeah. is my number nine because I've just cooled on it because honestly, the market caught up with it. You know, it's yeah. like, like everything else caught up with it and it's still great, but it's just, it, yeah, yeah, I don't like it. As I much do as I like to. it because you get to build networks and yeah. routes, and that's not so common in Roll no, 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 So yeah. I do like that for that reason. But I think it's a good pick. My number nine is Azul, mostly the original, but even yeah. the second one. Yeah. Uh, we haven't played the third one, and no, I do want to, be fair, to play have it not because played I like it. the Azul games. And this one I've talked a lot about. It's just something that like I played so much Azul. You, you I outplayed played it, yeah. a lot of it, and I'm just I'm done. I played plenty of it. And so th at this point, I haven't played any Azul in a while. Where I'd be like, yeah, I'd be down to yeah. play Azul yeah. again. Yeah. But it kind of was like, I played the first one so much, and when we got the second one, I was like, cool, I'm going to call the first one, now I'm good with the second one. And I was like, sort of outplayed on the second one straight Already, away. Because yeah. I was just like, I played a lot of Azul, and this one is different, but it ain't that different. And um, you know, yeah. and I don't know if the third one will be the same, but at least they're diamonds now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm intrigued by these games, because they are quite good. But yeah, Azul is a simple fact of like, it's a great game, that's why I played it so much, but I have just played it plenty enough. Yeah. I don't need to own it anymore. And that's fair. Just being like, I played there was some of my list. I'm like, I played again. But yeah. for now I'm just like, yeah, I'm just like, yeah, it's good. Bless you. <laughs> My number eight is a game that like, oh gosh, I really want to just be here with it still. And it's the Castles of Mad King Ludwig, yeah. which I know a lot of people love. They just did another Kickstarter dude. I've never really liked version. it. So yeah, this one was never gonna be on my list because I was never that hot on to be in with. Yeah, like for me, I think I love its potential and its idea more than its actual gameplay. Yeah. Um, and that is, uh, it's cool. Cause in this game, you're building a big castle that has a bunch of funky rooms big and hallways castle, and things. Yeah. yeah, so the idea is that's just sort of this random wild castle that this uh, mad king has asked you to build. Um, and each room type will provide different bonuses and things like that, which I really enjoy all the parts of it. But it's kind of, it's hard to achieve because certain certain rooms have a ton of entrances. In order to score that bonus, you have to basically complete all the entrances that yeah. have to be covered up with stuff and it has to all make sense and things like that. And I just find like, I never, get where I need to go and the game is always kind of like a little too quick almost and ends before I can get going and and there's so much stuff to kind of remember with how the rooms work and so just for whatever reason and then that mixed with the whole like the way that the market works which we've talked plenty about how yeah. you choose which tiles are available where and at what price it's just kind of nope. there's a lot of things that get in the way of me just like really loving the concept as mm. much so that's why it's my number eight and that's it's right. like at one point I was like this is so cool and it is but I just have always sort of been frustrated by it. Yeah. So that's why it's on my list. Yeah. Uh, my number eight is a game I, I still absolutely adore, but I kind of, uh, I, I, I played it, I think, too much in quick succession. That is Orléans. Or Orleans. You did play a lot. <laughs> yeah, um, I really like Orleans. Uh, I have not played it as much as you, so yeah, I'm okay. Uh, me and my roommate got on a, a big kick with uh, Orleans Invasion, specifically the co-op version. And we, we literally just had it set up 
uh, in his office in our apartment for like a couple months and just would play it a couple times a week mostly. Mm -hmm. Just like, and still love it, still love this game, still want to um, play it a ton, but just like, I've just cooled on it because I just I played it a lot and now it's especially like my thing is if I was gonna play I wouldn't want to play Invasion that much anymore. Yeah, we should because, probably go back to to all the, the or the other yeah all yeah, the other versions of the because there's a whole bunch of expansions for it. versions. But yeah, so I guess this is more this is more I guess early on Invasion, which I do think is the best version of this game. I think. I've just, I've just, I can kind of like Michael was saying, I kind of outplayed it. I just played it too much in really rapid succession. Um, and as much as I still enjoy it, and I still think it's the best version of that mm -hmm. game, I'm kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm, I think I'm done for a little while well, the, on that. Yeah, there's a tricky bit of like Orleans Invasion is static. Like, yes. What you need to get done yes. is the same. Now the events are going to come out in different order, but the buildings are always the same that are available to build. And you got to the point where you're like, we need to get eight. Building A, building yeah. B, then building C, and then we do this. So you have you have the whole game mapped out of yeah. how to win. Yeah, and like that takes away some of the. It shine. does, yeah. And you have different characters, but even then, we played every character a bunch of times. Yeah. And honestly, one thing that this isn't, I mean, this is, I guess, the game's fault or whatever. But it's like, Orion is also just like a setup, you know. It's, and you so have to that's kind of keep it set up. Like yeah, you did. <laughs> and so it's one of those things that also helps me kind of be like ah nah because the setup is is it's a lot. I think almost. Yeah, I think I'm with you. I kind of want to go back to some more competitive yeah, play. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's I think all. it's great. You know, and again, it's still super wonderful, so great. Love Orleans, but I definitely have cooled on it. I, I, I don't love it as much as I used to, which is fine. Right on. Well, that's yeah. why it's our number eight, folks. It's not so, that it's, it's not on the list. Yeah. It's barely, barely cooled. Yeah, barely cooled. It's still scalding almost. Uh, so that's our number eight. Let's get to number seven. Got to sip that bad boy. All right, my number seven is uh, is uh, I'm sorry to do this to praise B, but my number seven is Gizmos. Okay. Yeah, no, it's not any of the other praise like, Don't B's. you come after? So, don't you come after? Cacao. Praise B, praise B to Full Walker Harding. Blast, praise B, praise blast. B. Um, we love Full Walker Harding so much, and so this is one that kind of was like I was so high on it. Oh yeah. When it first came out, and then I pretty quickly went poof, down to here. Yeah. Now, first that's, play though was lit. I was like, "There's and that's, the greatest and thing that's ever." That's why it's on this list because honestly, the 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 honeymoon didn't last very long on it. And yeah. I don't hate the game, no. But it's just like I was. It was like Phil Walker Harding. It's kind of got like a, a marble delivery. This is a game where you're essentially collecting these like marbles, um, kind of like Potion Explosion, and you're essentially turning them into put you're out these cards and gizmos. You're, you're paying little, making little gizmos, and you're putting out these little cards, these machines, and then those cards a lot of times will. Do these things? It's it's a little engine builder. Think yeah. of something like a uh, what's a like something like Fantastic Factory. Something that's like a, a lighter, smaller engine builder where you just get like crazy efficient and combos on combos and combos and all this kind of crazy stuff. So on paper, it's just like, oh my gosh, I love this, love this, love this. And it's got like the, again the cool marble dispensary system, which I love that concept of being like, well, you kind of got to deal with what comes out in what order. It's all random. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. And we played it. And I was just like, oh my gosh. We immediately went out and bought it because we love Walker Harding. And we played it. We production were like, this amazing. Is nice, yeah. Production's nice. And played a couple more times. And very, very quickly, I was just like, huh. I don't like this as much as I thought I would. And like, again, don't hate it. Don't think it's a bad game. But I was just like, and more and more we played it. Played it a couple more times, a couple more times. And I was just like, every single time, I was like, I like this less. I like this less. To the point where I was just like, I don't think I want this game anymore. And we actually ended up calling it a while right. ago. And again, it's in. I think this is the um, not necessarily the product of the game because I think it's a really good game for what it is. I don't think I like quick little engine builders. I don't think I do either. I was going to say that this and and Fantastic Factories Fantastic fall into Factories, the same problem. Fantastic Factories, Splendor, all of these is ones. you get this engine built up quickly and then it ends. The yes. game ends straight away, and I'm like, let me play with the engine. Yeah. And I, I always run think I want that. Like, yeah. what's the perfect quick like, engine? Quick ramp Because I've never been a big fan of Splendor. So I'm like, why don't I like Splendor? Well, okay, I must just not like that game. So, okay, what's the other quick engine builder? I like Fantastic Factories. And I do like Fantastic Factories. But I'm like, it's too quick. I don't like this as much as I want to. It's then I was like, Gizmos. I was like, yes, this is, this, is, this is it. This is it. And then immediately I was like, I don't really like this that Same much. Man. And I'm like, I, don't th I think I like bigger engine builders. I think quick, fast engine builders are not for me. Yeah. It's hard. I just I get so excited by the ramp up, but I think games that take a little while longer to give you that ramp up or feel yeah. more satisfying. For whatever yeah. Reason. So Gizmos, I, I do like the game. I'm more than happy to play it, 
But I just, it's it's more, I don't really like those kinds of games, I think. I yeah. think that's just what it is. It's good to know that. Yeah, right? you know. It's an important thing. Uh, my number seven is a roll and write that I touted as the number one greatest roll and write of all time, and it's still very good, but it is Fleet the Dice Game. I've, I've, I've talked a lot of, given a lot of praise you to this have. game. You have. Because it is great. Yeah. It is combo-tastic, but it is... The same. Yeah, it's every static. Time. It's static. Nothing yeah. changes. And so the problem with this for me is that. Um, Give me another sheet. Yeah. Oh, they need to come on the expansion. Just another sheet. Like, well, and then you know? the same designers who made that just made Three Sisters, which just hit Kickstarter. So I'm like, I want to know mm -hmm. about that because yeah. I love what they made here, but I've just have played enough fleet. Yeah. I mean, a lot of my list kind of comes down to like, I've played enough of this yeah. and not enough elements change. And that's usually why you cool on stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but so Fleet the Dice Games are rolling right where you're a version of Fleet, uh, where you are getting boats into the water, going fishing. You're trying to catch fish as your main source of points, but you can kind of get these buildings active and stuff like that. And you're doing this through dice drafting. And so the dice drafting is the only thing that changes yeah. is what dice are available from turn to turn, but that's not a, a dynamic change yeah. from game to game. And so it's almost something that I wish like a certain special, I had a special building that you didn't have every yes. game or something that was like yeah. this little, ooh, I got this or special we, thing. Again, my, give me different sheets. Give me different sheets. Because then we can be playing on different sheets or whatever. Yeah. Because my thing is, is like with Fleet, not to like I'm take over your number, but like, every time. that's the thing, I do the exact same thing Every if I can time. manage it, if I can nice. manage it, yeah, yeah. I, which is usually pretty, possible. especially on like the wharf side. Yeah, you know, not the wharf that side. The is. wharf side with the buildings is sort of lackluster because there's all these types of buildings, but most of them, I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, I want this one and that one, and yeah. that's it. And I, I, I do the exact these, same cool. things every single yeah. time. Yeah, so that's what it is for me. It's like it's so combo tastic because you get all these stars, oh, it's still to bubble fun. in yeah. stuff, and it's very satisfying in that way. But I just, you know, with time and playing, I realize like, oh, you know what? There's like a quarter of this game in terms of what's available on the sheet that I'm like, I just don't care. I'm not gonna bother with it. Yeah. And so that's kind of kept it the is static. an expansion. So it's, it's kind of dipped down. An expansion now. or like new sheets, which will also be yeah. expansion. Something like that. Still there. And again, still love it, not get rid yeah. of it. No, but like, it's just like I'm like, yeah. I would rather play cartographers. I would rather play Rajas of the Gandhis. Yeah, because those games, oh, especially cartographers, it really changes. Yeah, because of the card yeah. order. And that's yeah. why cartographers is so brilliant. It's like the map for the most part stays the same. You can choose a different size, but the, the score of the cards and the scoring oh. keeps it so yeah. Dynamic. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, it just beats yeah. it. Um, so that's my number seven is Fleet the Dice Game. All right, that's our number seven. Let's go ahead and get number six. So my number six is a game that is so hard and it just is more work than it's worth. It's Robinson Crusoe. <laughs> Yeah, here's I don't mind my thing. playing it once in a while, but it's like, man, it's just so punishing. Here's why it's not on my list. It was never that high for me to begin with. That's I've a always good enjoyed point. Robinson Crusoe, but I've never been that into this game. It's it's never been my number one, but is the concept and stuff I really enjoy. And, yeah. and I think maybe I was more immersed in it early on. But yeah, even still, I've I've the main the reason it's on my list is like I haven't ever played the game and come out of it and been like, oh, it's here now. It's always been like, oh, it's here or static or slightly lower yeah, or yeah, static or slightly lower. That's fair. That's all. So it's been a kind of gradual decline. That's fair. Um, and it doesn't mean it's a bad game. And no, stuff, no, but it's, it's a just great like, game. There's a lot to think about. It's heavy. There's a lot seemingly to kind of. It's a bit of a it setup. It makes sense and, yeah. what the game is. It's a bit of a setup and stuff, and the game is kind of punishing. And it's designed to be that yeah. way. It's it's meant to be very hard and stuff, but when I get to that point, it sort of, in my eyes, feels like I don't have many choices to make. I'm mm. just sort of like, we have to eat or we're gonna die. So I gotta go do this. Mm. We also have to do this or we're gonna die. Well, I have to do that. That's, a, that's fair. I'm just mitigating what's in front of me and it's a survival game. So that's what you're dealing with. Yeah. Oh, this weather happened. I need to mitigate that. I need to deal with that. But I guess it's just not, I'd rather, in games in general, my style is like, I want to build something. Yeah. I want to build something up. This is just trying to like get through it. Yeah. You know, and I don't mind playing it once in a while, but you know, like they have this new version coming out, this complete edition. I'm like, oh, could nah. not. Everyone's like, you getting it? We're like, no. Absolutely <laughs> like, not. I, I don't I'm need more of this thing that hurts. Yeah. I'm glad with what we have, yeah. but I'm like, we're never going to get yeah, through even that There's much. so many scenarios. I'm like, yeah, I we're know. fine. That's that's, that's why I was on my list because I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I had an experience where I was like, oh my gosh, I can't yeah. wait to play that again. I was, just I like, was never that hot on to be with. Again, I've always liked the game, but I've never, I've never like loved Robinson Crusoe. My Robinson Crusoe game is Friday. And I get to play it Boom. with myself. Boom. Exactly. That's it. That's my number six, Robinson Crusoe. Uh, my number six is a game I do really enjoy, but that is Root. Root, I cooled on pretty quickly. And if, although I do like the game, I love the concept of Root. It's great. But I think I love the concept of Root more than I like the game of Root. 
I love the concept. So Root is a game, a woodland game of might and flight might and right. Might and right. Yeah, that's it. But basically, you have, you're playing as a faction and you're basically trying to do different stuff. But the cool thing about the game, this is, is a very, very cool thing, is every faction is asymmetrical. And I'm talking like really different. They function differently. They are they have win conditions. very, very different not games. Win conditions, but to the games. point where when you are playing a different faction, you basically have to relearn the game. Yeah. Because... Now, not completely, not everything is different, but you are doing 100% something different than if you're playing the birds, you're playing 100% different game than the cats. Yeah. And again, certain things like fighting and stuff like that, those are the same. But it's like you are learning a whole new game and every single time we play it, I'm like, I just want to play a faction I know because I don't want to learn a new game. Yeah. I just don't want to. And I love the fact that now there's, there's like two more expansions, which we've actually played. There's even like two more expansions after that. I'm sure they're going to extend it again. And I'm like, I love this concept. But every single time, I'm like, I just, I don't want to have to learn this game again. So My like, I don't want to play. Can't take it. Yeah. yeah, it's like I don't. I want to play the cats because I know more or less how to play the cats. <laughs> sure. And I'm like, I don't want to play anyone else. Woodland Knights, I've played a couple times. I could probably play them. But it's like, I, I like just, them a lot. I love the concept. When it first came out, I was like, I love the art. I love the look of it. I was oh, like, yes, great. yes, 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 yes. And as we played it, I'm like, this is too much for me personally. Now there's Root Digital, which I like because it mitigates that. It is a that. good step in the right direction. Because you also kind of need to know what everyone else is doing. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know how to stop them. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, Root Digital to me is, I'm like, cool, I'll just play the digital version. It definitely mitigates it. But even then, with the digital version, I'm still just like, man, this is a lot. Yeah. This is a lot. And I, I think it's a game that I enjoy. I'll gladly play. But I just, I, I don't like it as much as I want to like it. Because I love the concept so much. I think I'm there. I don't think it's ever lived up to its concept for us. Because yeah. it's, it's also, a, we're not... It's a confrontational game, and yeah. we're not very confrontational Well, you also you usually want to play with at least three or four players. Yeah. We usually don't Digital's have that. This is the way to go, though, because you can play against AIs. Yeah, like, exactly. Cool. So I do like Root. I love the concept of Root. I think it's a very good game. Oh, yeah. It's just no for doubt. me, I'm like, I just, I don't want to have to relearn a game every single time I want to play a different faction. I want to play where it's like, oh, I have a different, like, even something like, say, Cry Havoc, where, like, all the factions are very different. They're not that much to learn when you're, like, when you're yeah, playing a new yeah, one, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I'd rather play something like that if I want, like, really asymmetric factions. Respect. But yeah, so Root, spot number six. I still really like it, but yeah, it's on here. All right, let's get to number five. All right, my number five is a game where I think I, I was blinded by the production. Blinded by the production. And, um... Man, 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 Pretty much, yeah. Sorry, what's up? That was good, I like that. Um, I was kind of blinded by the production. Not that it's a bad game, but I think it is a okay, maybe boarding on good game, not a great game, and that is Iquazu. Oh. I really like Iguazu a lot. I do. It's a it's a simple yeah, set collection game. Yeah, I like that game, but yeah, fair Yeah, it's a si very simple set <laughs> collection game where you are, uh, there's this cool big like water friend serpent thing that is um, cruising across, cruising the, across the a waterfall. The waterfall yeah. yeah, and then beneath the waterfall, you're kind of like putting these gems to hide them from someone who's trying to, it's a theme. It's very, very pretty, but it's very cool because it's, like, it's got this like 3D board and you're putting, and as the, 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 friendly water monster moves across the thing you're actually unveiling different spots behind the waterfall yeah. and as as they're moving across other spots over here get covered up it's really really cool i mean it is a showstopper in terms of production yeah. it is so so cool but it's pretty finicky because you have to build that 3d waterfall thing it's not the easiest to, game get to get all into. the you have to like put all these tiles face down yeah. behind the waterfall, then build the waterfall on top of it. You're constantly having to move the serpent the eye across there and, they, and then put, take the, the waterfall from this side, move over to this side, and it's really cool. But in the end, it's a very, very simple set collection game that I actually really like. I think yeah. it's a good game, but I think, I think it's a good game. I don't think it's a great game, but I think it gets buoyed by the amazing production by Hobbit. And it is amazing production. And I do really like it. And this is a game that like I want to introduce people to oh, because yeah. it's very simple ultimately. Oh yeah. But you people will be like, holy look at this game. So like we still have it. I I don't necessarily want to get rid of it. I really like this game. But this is a game where I I think I was just like look at how cool this board is. Look at how cool because it's the gimmick works. It makes sense within the theme of the game. Oh, yeah. I was like this is so freaking cool. And then, but as we put it more and more, I'm like, yeah, but this is a very simple set collection game that I think is good, but there are much better set collection games out there. And it's kind of a pain to set up. And so, like, I really like this game, but I, I've definitely cooled on it very significantly. Interesting. I haven't had that problem. Interesting. Because I do like See, it. See, I figured you would have cooled on it more than me. 
I think I've kind of gone the other direction. Interesting. Okay, cool. I, I'm not good at the game, so I think the first couple games, I'm like, man, everyone's so much. Well, we had to stop playing with Karen because she oh, would just man. demolish she us. Because yeah. you kind of have to think in two directions at once. Because you're trying to deal with like the column that you're in. We won't get too into it, but there's columns, and then you can also score things and get tiles to be a rose. Yeah. And so you kind of want to plan you're, both. You're at planning the same ahead. Time. Yeah. And Karen's very good. She's at that. good at that. We're bad so at she that. has all the tiles. I have none. But yeah, I think it's great. But it's a uh, respect. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. yeah that's how my it is. my number five is also in the animal kingdom. It's evolution. Yeah, I almost put evolution. Uh, the reason I didn't is because like I like evolution, I like evolution climate more, and I like oceans even more than that. Yes. So to me, I'm like I still like this system. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? So yeah. For yeah. me, when I'm talking about evolution, I'm talking mostly base evolution. Yeah, oh, yeah. And I, was... I'll include evolution climate to a degree in there. Yeah. But it's a game that is awesome because you're you're creating these traits for species and stuff. It's a very satisfying game. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to eat the most food. That means your your populations are strong. You have enough food to go around. You have the right traits. You eat. You live. That's evolution, baby. But um, Boom. It's, a, it's a game that, again, we've had for quite a long time. We've played a lot, and it's a fairly simple game. And so it's just one of those things that I'm like, I sort of have, I'm going to get long neck. I want to get forage yeah. on my thing. Yeah. And like that's priority number one and two. I'll go carnivore if I have to, but yeah. I'm not going to try to. I'm just sort of setting my ways with it, and that's partially my fault. Um, but the game has such incredible art, especially with climate. You get a little bit more to play with because mm -hmm. you can kind of mess with the world a little bit. And that gives a little more to think of. But for me, evolution sort of goes down because now there's like oceans, which is yeah. like a newer version of a similar idea. Yeah, but it was, I feel like we were cooling regardless. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now yeah. I'm like, oh, I kind of have a good replacement for it. So I just don't yeah, think oh, I need evolution sure. in my life sure. anymore on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. It's great once in a while, but I'm just not going to... It's going to be once or twice a year at max. At max. Yeah, really though. You know? I would, I would rather play oceans... Every single time. Yeah. yeah, but you know, evolution has has been in our life for a long time. Like if they somehow introduce some kind of climate thing to evolution of oceans, <laughs> then I'd really be like, whatever, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's you know, um, yeah, it's just it's it's nothing really against the game other than I'm just like, I have a, a newer version I'd like to play, but it doesn't yeah. take anything. And away And sometimes from it. it's like a newer, better version came out. Yeah. So now I don't want to play. That's, that's all. That's fair. Like that's honestly, all. yeah, yeah. So that's my number five is evolution. Uh, and so let's cool. get into our number fours. So my number four is a game that we have played so many times over the years, and then I had not played this. I didn't put this on my list because yeah. you, I knew you were going to put this on my list. I hadn't played this for a long time, and we finally played it the other day, and it was so fun to play again. But I just have probably played enough of it, and that is legendary. Yeah. A Marvel I still don't need game. to like play it at that no. much anymore yeah we played it so much this is a great deck building game with all your favorite marvel heroes you just smash up five of them creates this big hero deck and you're just gonna recruit different cards and stuff straight up deck building you're gonna use those cards to then buy more heroes and then attack uh henchmen and villains and then ultimately the mastermind you're taking on loki or the or yeah. um, mysterio, mysterio yeah, was you know one. or whatever it is uh and so it's a great game because there's so much support for it. There's so many oh, types gosh. of heroes. There's different versions of heroes. There's an overwhelming amount of stuff. But man, we've just played this game so many times. It's probably times. still our most played game at this point, yeah. Because we had it early on in our career. It's the first game we sort of invested in expansions for. Got a ton of stuff. Played it multiple times a week for a very long time. And so even with all this time off and I played it again, I didn't have, I didn't get giddy about it. I was enjoying myself. Oh yeah, for sure. But I was just like... It used yeah. to be so giddy every time we played it. Right, yeah. it was so high up, and the ceiling is just here now. Yeah. And it's still a good ceiling, but like I will never break through that no, ceiling no, again. No, There's no. nothing that even that game with a new introduce, yeah, no, I think no. that would make me go, "Oh my gosh, I'm hot on this again now." And so again, it's a good problem to have. I just have played so much of this for so long that I'm just like, my enthusiasm has dwindled to yeah, a degree. Fair. Not I'm a bad thing. Both. Would happily play yeah. it, but I'm just like, I. have Done yeah. this thing before, so yeah, that's I'm the all. Same, exact same boat. I was gonna put on my list. I figured you weren't having your list. So I was like, I'll put something else. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm the same boat. It would have been on my list too. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. I love it, love it. And we played, replayed the other day, and I was like, man, I still really love this game. But I was like, but I, like you said, I'm not. I will never. I don't think be giddy to play that game again. It used to be we're like, like every single time we're like, oh, I'm so excited to try out this combo and did it. It was just so my, much. Fun. My thing when I'm hot on a game is I finish the game and I'm just like, I want to play it again right yeah. now. And legendary, I'm just like, no, I'm good for a while now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's totally fine. Yeah. Uh, my number four is um, is uh, a Sorcerer City, and this is a game that like we play it first few times, and I was so hot on it. It's such a good and I have, idea, and I have cooled very significantly on it. Now, again, some of that is now kind of gone back up a little bit because we really figured out the figured sweet out the spot in terms it. of the player count. Yeah. The player, this is a game that you should play with three, no more, no less. Even two is fine. 
Yeah. Two is fine. Yeah. Two to three. It goes up to six. Never do that ever in your life. One, because you'll need, uh, you have to put on the floor. Yeah. Because it takes up so much space. Of a warehouse. I love you, Druid City Games, but make your game smaller, please. Um, <laughs> your games is big. Your games is big. I like Sorcerer City. Uh, this is kind of like Speed Carcass Zone. You're essentially building yeah. out the Sorcerer City each time. You're like wizards or whatever. Um, and you're building out the city. You're basically taking these tiles. You're flipping them over one by one. Everyone has their own set of tiles. On them. And they have four different colors. And you, you don't have to match colors, but it's beneficial for you to match colors next to each other because the more of an area of a big color you have, generally the better it is. So that's what you're trying to do, but you have a limited amount of time to do it. The cool thing about the game is like you have a certain amount of tiles, you only have two minutes to build your city. But then throughout the game, you're gonna be gaining more and more and more tiles. So by the end of the game, your, your stack of tiles is like twice as big. Yeah, it's brutal. And so then as the game goes on, it gets harder and harder and harder to finish your city in that time. So it gets stressful, it's really, really fun. The problem is, that's the fun part. Everything else in the game is fine, but you then have to do like this influence phase. Then you have to go through like the buying phase and then you have to like score your points. And then you have to like, well, first you have to get your magic and convert your magic to something. And then you have to do all these other steps and then you have to get a new monsters, monsters, which is a cool idea because the monsters mess with your city. You don't know when they're gonna come up. They come up, you're like, crap, it's a monster. Okay, I have to do this. Oh crap, and I have to destroy this. And that's really fun. And you have to be able to remember that in the moment. You have to remember under it time pressure. In, and not to mention, like you have to make sure everyone else knows it too. So you have to constantly teach stuff throughout the game. And in the end, the fun part is building your city. And in the end all be all of the game, that is the smallest part of the game. In terms, especially in terms of time. Because that's yes. like two you minutes. Spend more time but then you spend like three or four minutes doing the influence phase. Then you spend like five minutes doing the buying phase. And they have to bring out a new monster and explain what the monster does. Make sure everyone's cool. That's Put another couple minutes. Shuffle them up. And then you shelve them up, boom. And they have two more minutes of, oh, it's so much fun. And then you go back to that whole thing. And I'm like, get rid of, like, you have to get more tiles. That's part of it. Like, keep the buying phase. Get rid of everything else. Like, the influence phase needs to go away. In my opinion, it's personally. Too, it's, too, it's, too, it's too impactful, too. It's too impactful. It's like, if you don't go influence, you're not going to win that game. Yeah. Unless so, you somehow go very heavy in another direction. So it it's just like, like... You have to focus on it. I just want the speed Carcassonne. Yeah. And I don't want anything else. And, I and that. like, I, that's what I want. I want speed Carcassonne and nothing else, and that's it. And, and this game has... I think this game is too much on top of it. I still like the game. And at two players, it plays quick enough yeah. that it's fine. Three players, it plays again quick enough where it's fine. Anything more, and I'm like, nope, it goes on way too long. There's always going to be someone who doesn't remember what the monster does. So when everyone's building, they're like, wait, what's this do? What does this do? And you're like, oh, uh, uh, that one does this. And then, you're, then also you lost 10 seconds, and it's just like two to three players, that's it. And honestly, I think half the game should go. Personally, that's so I like it still a lot, but yeah, it's just not really what I want it to be. Yeah, right that's on. okay. That's okay. That's all yeah. right. Doesn't mean it's bad. It's number four, though. Yeah, so let's get into our number three. Oh, number three. I was so excited when this came out, and I still like it, but I, I just it, its predecessor is such high in my thoughts, and this is uh, the Taverns of Tiefenthal. Oh, yeah. Because Tavern of Vault is not yeah. a sequel to Quacks of Quidlinburg, but it was the next no, game, and it's kind of yeah. got a push your luck element, or yes, it's just card drawing, really. Um, there's just a luck element, and you can't push it. There's a luck element, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys, you can't really push it, yeah. And so, um, but Tavern of Vault, you are building out your tavern, and you are, um, you are, yeah, just working your tavern. You essentially a deck building game, and you are going to flip over your cards. And then you have uh, different workers in your in your tavern. You have people who like allow you to mitigate some dice, allow you to like sell beer, allow you to get money, this kind of stuff. But then you also have people who are sitting at tables, and those are people who are in your tavern. But your tavern can fill up with patrons. So mm -hmm. once you fill up with patrons, you have to stop drawing. Um, but then you you get then you have dice that you're kind of doing this cool dice drafting part of it, which is really cool. And you use those dice to get money and then to get beer. Beer allows you to get more patrons. You're like, hey, I've got a really good microbrew. Come on in. Come on down. They get more people. And then money allows you to buy more employees, to hire more employees, and also to upgrade your tavern, which is a really really cool part of the game. You can basically every part of your tavern you can you can it's all puzzle pieces. You can flip over and it makes it way better. Yeah. Super super cool. Love the concept of this game. But this game, this might just be the fact that I have just had such horrible luck with this game. But just this game, to me, needs more mitigation. It just abs. One, also, I think it needs an expansion. I think it's. I think after you played a couple times, you're like, cool. I've that. seen everything. I've seen need yeah. to see in this game. But I think it needs mitigation because there's been so many times for the last like two rounds of the game. You get destroyed. I just immediately drew. Boom, boom, boom. Three or four patrons, and I was like. Cool, I can't draw anyone else now, and so... I now can't do really anything in this round. And it's like, 
It just, there's been, a, I've had multiple times where I've had a very bad experience just because I drew poorly. And the problem is, is you can like spend the whole game building up. Yeah. And just by the way the cards go, yeah. your last round is the round where it goes really bad. Yes. And like, if that happens in round two, whatever. Whatever. Um, um, round nine or whatever the final round is and you just don't get to do anything that's not that's yeah. not the arc of a game should go like this yeah exactly you know, and, it, and it, you end up on this and again peak. it might just be bad luck right and I do still like the game but it's just it has it has even even before I was having horrible luck with the game I was starting to cool on it and then just the last like number of times I've played it last like three or four times I have ended it being like I didn't have fun because yeah. I just had horrible luck with card drawing and yeah. again, yeah, I've had some pretty bad luck. And it's like, oh, get more tables so more people can sit down. But it's like, I just, it just didn't work out for me. And so I really like this game. I think it needs an expansion. It's like so close to being a game that I love. And in the end, I have just absolutely gone ice cold on it for the most part because it's just like, I don't know, it just for whatever reason doesn't work for me very much. And I, but I was here, so I've there. cooled on it a lot. It's not a bad game, but I'll just play Quax, which aren't similar, but they just because they're both Wolf Game Wars, yeah. they can compare a lot. Sort of gets a sort of comparison. Um, yeah. My number three is a game that I love the concept of and stuff, and still will enjoy, but it's more been like uh, it kind of got expanded upon that we're just pairing back, and that's role player. Yeah, role player is a really cool game where you are playing a person rolling out a and d character yeah. while also simultaneously being in a D&D world. It's just kind yeah. of funky and fun in that way. So you're rolling uh, out dice and then drafting those dice to add to your character sheet to ultimately end up in stats and dexterity and strength and wisdom and Career all those things that you'll see in D&D, yeah. &D, which is awesome. Uh, so you're, you're just rolling out this character. And you have these little cards and stuff that you want to have um, your strength be within a certain range or a specific number. And and so you're trying to go for that. There's different colors of dice. And you want those different colors to be in, a, in certain spots, kind of like Sagrada. Um, and so there's some fun things to do. And there's kind of some set collection and stuff from this market of cards that will give you different perks, allow you to mitigate dice, do different things. Um, they might give you set collection with armor and stuff. So there's some cool things to think about there. And they started adding some expansions of Monsters and Minions, which at the start I was like, this is the coolest thing ever because now it kind of goes one foot further. I think it's a good expansion. Into, yeah. yeah, into the D&D world where now you're actually fighting monsters and stuff. But it sort of adds some cards and adds some things and also makes it so that I only want to play with that part of it. And I sort of lost the actual base game of role player in that. And then Fiends and Familiars, for me, more than anything, is just sort of like take it or leave it. It's not bad. It's not great. It's just, it's cool. But um, I just kind of like am down with the base game as it is. But then even that with how mm -hmm. much we've played with the base game, I'm just like... I don't even necessarily need to play yeah. that very often anymore. Yeah. So it's just one that's a really cool concept that sort of the theme for my list is like I've sort of have played it out. Yeah. Um, and as we started pairing away some of those expansions and we recently just played the base game, I was like, cool. I don't still, yeah. I probably like the base game the best, but I probably still don't like yeah. love it anymore. I think that's fair. Um, so that's why it's my number three. Role yeah, player. I've cooled on it too. I still like the game, but I've cooled on it. Yeah. That's it. Just cool on it. This whole list is, folks. Yeah, it's just cool cooling on stuff. It's cooling down. Uh, but that's our number three, so let's hop into number two. All right, so my number two is a game that um, is, is still great. But I was definitely like lifted up in the early days of playing it because it has my childhood sort of in a box, yeah. and that is Dinosaur Island. Yeah. Dinosaur Island, Jurassic Park-ish, in a box with wonderful colors. It's just got personality out the wazoo. Oh, yeah. The production is great. Um, and all these things are still true about the game. The game is great. It really is. Yes. It's mechanically very sound. It's a big game. You're doing all sorts of stuff. There's lots of uh, types of dinosaurs you can get. There's lots of types of building upgrades and stuff you can fill your park with. There's a ton of things to explore there. But this is a game that for me, I've just cooled on it a bit because in the early go, I was so excited to see something that represented my childhood yeah. so well and had the funky colors of the 90s and yeah. stuff. And I just loved that production so much. And the fact that it was basically Jurassic Park, I was so up high. And then now when I play it, all those things are still true, yeah. but I'm not immersed by those things anymore. I'm not drawn in. And so what I'm left with is a very big mechanically sound game that I think of and play purely thinking mechanically with yeah. everything. I'm just trying to think of like, well, my worker should go here because that'll get me three coins, which allows me to get that. I'm not thinking about dinosaurs running yeah, around. Yeah. I'm not transported by this anymore. Yeah. And so again, that might be like my fault and maybe I should just be more mindful of that and enjoy like, what is this game doing? But I just think of it in mechanical terms and it is a big game. And so I don't hate it, but I kind of like 
want to be transported again. So I'm really excited that they're doing another one, Dinosaur yeah. World, where you actually like tour your park yeah. and stuff. And I'm like, now that I am excited for that one. Yeah. sounds good because that's the one thing about Dinosaur Island. Island I can say is like you build this park, but the park is very kind of from a distance yes. and abstract. Yes, I'm not. The park going phase into the, game the park. Is, is the quickest phase. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, I kind of want to go into the park a little yeah. more. I want to like feel. I think that's fair. Being see, I haven't really cool on Dinosaur Island, but I, I totally understand why you have. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all. Yeah. So that's my number two is Dinosaur Island. Still love it and stuff, but I just like I want to get immersed in it more. Yeah. That's and fair. I just don't. I don't anymore. Hey, right, let's that's hope for all. Dinosaur World. My number two is actually also a dinosaur game. Weirdly enough, and this hey. is actually Raptor. Yeah. This yeah, is yeah. a, yeah. a Brukatala game um, that is a two-player asymmetric game where one player is playing a, fan, a raptor, mother raptor and her babies, and the other one's playing scientists. Scientists are trying to capture the raptors. The raptors are trying to escape in, from the scientists and or kill all the scientists. Yeah. It's very, very asymmetric. You're, you're playing com two completely different games, and it's got this really, really cool card playing um, situation mm -hmm. where you have numbered cards, and um, and if you play, you each play a card simultaneously. Whoever played the lower card gets to do the action, There's right? A power on that gets card. Gets to do the yeah. action. Whoever played the higher card gets whatever the difference between those two cards, they get that amount of action points, which they can use to like run around, tranquilize babies if you're the scientist, eat people if you're the raptor, all yeah. sorts of different stuff. It's very, very cool. Very interesting, cool concept for a game that yeah. works really, really well. And this is a game that like when we first played it, we were just like, holy crap, because we never played something like this before. And I was like, this is yeah. amazing. So cool. And I love Bruno Catala. And so I was like, this is so, Vincent so, Dutrait so. Vincent art as well. Yeah, it just looks good. It's so cool. And every single time I played it, I was like, I don't actually know if I like this game that much. And then more and more <laughs> as I've played it, I've kind of been like, I think this is one of those games where I'm like, I fully understand that this is a good game that... I think is incredibly well designed. I think works incredibly well, but for whatever reason, I just don't like it that much. I just don't. It, for whatever yeah. reason, I, I just I don't really enjoy my plays of it that much. I think you've learned yourself more as a gamer yeah. since when we yeah. first played this at a, like a board game cafe. I think you just know yourself better. Yeah, and that's what it is. Like it's not, I don't think it's a bad game. I think it's a great game. It's just one that I don't particularly enjoy. And you can think something is a good, like this is a great design. It's just one that doesn't mesh with me for whatever reason. one of reason. my favorite things in board games is you can say and fully acknowledge this is a great game but not for me. Yeah, exactly. And that's totally fine. That's oh, kind of what Raptor is for me. And so I was so hot when we first tried it because I was like, this is so cool. Yeah. And it is so cool. And I'm like, this is really well done. And it is really well done. <laughs> and then I'm kind of like, and I don't really think I want to play it. And that's just kind of where I am. So I do li I like Raptor in concept. I think it's wonderful. You like a two-player asymmetric game that's not too long. Pick up Raptor. It's great. Yeah. But for whatever reason, it's not for me. Fair enough. So I've cooled on it a lot, yeah. That's all right. That happens, yeah. you know. That's the beauty of this of this hobby, you know. Yeah. Things can be great at one point and then not so great for yeah. you another. It's all you're just going through chapters of your board gaming life, seasons as yeah, it were. Yeah, that's what it's it is. It's a new now. That's yeah. all it is. Right. So that's our number two. We do have one more game each. That is perhaps the chilliest of them all. I now. guess, yeah, yeah, best of all. Anyway, so let's get to it right now. This is the one that made me think of this list. Um, and that is uh, Flatline is my number one. Yeah. So Flatline is a kind of a sequel <sighs> a to a game <laughs> called, yeah, see, Flatline is a sequel to a game called Fuse. Yeah. And Fuse is a game where you're rolling out dice trying to defuse bombs. Flatline is the same thing, you're rolling out these dice, but this time you're trying to heal patients from the bomb sort of like blast. Injured it's, in that, it's got yeah. a really cool through story, honestly. Yeah, yeah. And I have come to realize, I not only is like, oh, I'm just cool on this. I just don't, flat out don't like Flatline. I Same. think it's not even so much like, oh, this isn't the game for me. I just don't like Flatline. I really don't. Um, as much as I want to because, and I realized, like, we had gotten rid of Fuse and kept Flatline. And now I'm like, I want Fuse mistake. back. Should have been the other way around. Fuse <laughs> is simple. It's exactly what it should be. You're rolling out dice, hectic, crazy. It's 10 minutes of bananas. She You're defusing bombs. Flatline, I, I just think there's too much going on. You have all these cards you're trying to do. You have all these, like, emergencies you're trying to do. On top of all that, you're trying to heal all these patients which is the, that's the game, is trying to heal all these patients, but you have all this other stuff that distracts you from doing that, and it's already hard to do that, and it's just, I just don't think I like it very much. When we first tried it a few times, I'm like, oh, this is like Fuse, but so much better and so much more. Yeah, we already put it out there saying like, this is, this is like, it's a Fuse want, killer, it's yeah. It's Fuse, but with more game, and I'm like, I don't want more game. I don't want more game, Change yeah. And and when pe a lot of people, when we did our, we when we did our marathon, I feel like we bring it up all the time, but we did our marathon, we played all of our games in one week, 
one thing, one of the most common comments we got were like, are there any games that after doing this, you realize you didn't like anymore? That's, and we always were like, ah, not really, because there was a couple that were kind of like, I don't like this as much as I wanted. But Flatline was the only one where I was like, you know what? I don't think I like this game. I don't think I need this game anymore. And so like, that was really the only, other ones were kind of like, ah, I've kind of cooled on this. But from that marathon, that was when I realized, I'm like, I don't think I like Flatline. And, and, and I was so hot on it, all the way down to me like being straight up like, no, I just don't like this game at yeah, all. Respect. Yeah, and, and no, no shade to people who like Flatline. I think it's a cool concept, but in the end, I just want to play Fuse. That's all I want to do. I want to play Fuse, and Flatline's my number one because it's just, it's gone from super hot to just flat out, I don't want, I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. respect. My number one is a game that a lot of people like, and it's Scythe. You like Scythe. I do. Yeah. I don't love it as much as I used to or thought I did. Uh, so Scythe is a game that I've had this kind of journey with. And so there's a few things that factor into it. One, a piece of my cooling on it is the fact that I'm just not great at it. And that honestly, I think is a valid factor. Yeah, it's hard to like love something you just get smashed in over and over again. Yeah. It's like, yeah, sign me up. Yeah, Pat, right. You know, so there is a piece of that and I can acknowledge that. There's another piece of this that's really hurt it honestly. It's the app for Scythe. While on its face seems really great, there's some UI things and some certain uh, ways that it works that have absolutely ruined games of this yeah. for me on a frequent basis to the point where I'm like, I don't think I'm playing that app again until they make those changes because it ruins it and it's yeah. totally nonsensical. Yeah. It's about like, there's just certain things that it allows you to do and it's like, no one would ever choose this. Why is it an option and why does it look like there's some things that are confusing about it. I don't want to get into all that, but yeah, it's just yeah. like, I'm just like, why this is yeah, and it misleading. And there's no one do. There's so no like, one do. So you're and like, so literally when you actually mess up, you're whole like, games because yeah, that, there's sometimes a, a miss button click has decimated games. Yeah. yeah. So this game is also really cool and it's big and a beautiful production and stuff. But this game is something that people have played so much going back to me not being great at it, where people know strategies and they say like, you should be able to win this game like 18 turns. And when I first started playing the game, because like maybe the, the people I was playing with, I'm just sort of going around. I didn't feel like under pressure time wise. Mm -hmm. And now when I play, I can only think of like, I have to find the most efficient route to get this started, this started, this started, this started. And I'm stressed about it straight away. Mm. And then people come in to mess with my stuff. And I'm like, I just want a game where I can sort of explore and take a little time with it. And I feel like I don't have the time because Scythe, now feels like a racing game. You're just yeah. racing to get those Which objectives. Which kind of is what it is, yeah. Like, yeah. And so like, there's all these things where I'm just like, ah, oh, I just don't like that as much. And ah, oh, I get smashed when I play, or ah, oh, I play this app, and the app has some stupid elements to it that make <laughs> it confusing and ruin my game there. So it's just like, every time I play, I, I just, I don't have any like, oh hell yeah moments yeah. anymore. And so it's just kind Do of like Do you think if, if we started now, because it's side two player is not great, so we don't really play physical. That's also do you a think problem. if we started playing physically again, do you think that might change? It might. It might change. Um, but it's also a big setup and stuff yeah. if you're playing. I think it's valid. Everything you're saying, so, I think it's totally valid. Yeah, I don't think I it, think that's a piece yeah. of it, but it's like we don't have a good player count typically to no, play yeah. it. And if I'm, you know, playing online against people, I'm gonna get destroyed, you know. And so it's just a weird thing of like it's not anything's fault. It's just a lot of things have kind of gotten in the way of me. Just like yeah, it's being not able on my list because I have definitely cooled on too. It's not on my list, kind of for the same reason that Robinson Crusoe, where like I was never as hot on Scythe as like it seemingly. I went like else here was. on the first play and I shot up and I was yeah. just like, oh my god, this is the coolest thing ever. And then now I'm kind of going like, Burr. yeah. And I, I still like Scythe. I still enjoy playing it a lot. I still really, really enjoy it. But I was never like over the moon about Scythe yeah, to sure. begin with. I've always thought I was like, this is cool and I, 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 I enjoy this. Yeah, I think but I've getting never playing it physically it. would yeah. be a big help. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, and we're not, it's not going anywhere, we're not getting rid know, of it. We're but. still, we're at the, hope, hopefully, knock on wood, hopefully the end of COVID, Get you know, it. or the world's opening up. So it's like, yeah, it's, I think that's a valid thing to, because a lot of people are like, well, you're just, you're, that's the app's fault. It's like, yeah, but we've been inside for over fault. a year. So I have to play the app. So it's like, I think that's a valid thing, yeah. especially considering the state so of the world. So TBD on that. But for right now, it's my number one game that I've cooled that's on fair. because it was way high in the sky. Yeah, that's fair. I think it's, it's fair. I think, it's, I think this game's great, but I've cooled on it too. Yeah. yeah. So that's our list. What do you think of our list? Do we name your very favorite game and you hate us now? That's fine and valid. Don't take those Put seriously. in the comments. Let us it's down just gently. Games. They're just toys. We're sensitive lads. You know, just say, hey, y'all missed the mark on that. I get it. <laughs> um, but those are the games we've cooled on. What are some games for you that you played at one point? You're like, this is the greatest thing ever. And now you're like, 
no, that's good, but it's not maybe not what and you why? thought. Yeah, and right? why? Yeah, let us know what games you've cooled on. Because I think, I think it's, it's inter- a part I think of it. It's, and I think it's an interesting concept. And I don't think yeah. it's a bad thing to no. cool. Yeah. And then on top of this, so next month we do our top 10. We're going to do top 10 games that have grown on us. Yeah. Because there's the other, other side of this coin of the game where you first when you played, you're like, okay. And then you play, you're like, okay. Mm. You play, you're like, Dang, okay. That you was know. Scythe for me. First game was like, okay. Second game was like, whoa. Third game was like, greatest game ever made. Yeah, that's interesting, right? And so it's one up. of those things where, so next month for our next top 10, we're going to do kind of the opposite side yeah. of just like games that have grown on us. Side of that so think about that as well. And comment on that video in like a month. Boom. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, put it down in the comments because I, I find stuff like this very interesting. Um, and yeah, because if you cool on it, that's fine. That's, that's okay. totally fine. That's yeah. totally fine. If you want to see us do more crazy stuff right here, also check us out on Patreon, yeah. folks. We want to thank all of our patrons. You'll see them scrolling along the bottom here. Uh, you can you help make this whole thing happen. Yeah. We're going to be moving uh, into a house this year, very likely. We're going to be upgrading our studio and stuff. And just a big piece of being able to do any of that or get new equipment or do kind of wild ideas is from the support of our patrons. So thank you so much. And if you yeah. like what we do, consider checking out our Patreon today and supporting if you can. We yeah. love it. There's some videos over there that like live there but aren't yeah. for just for patrons. Check they're just free, but they're just over there. So check it out too. Yeah. And I think that's it, right? That's it. So until next time, I'm Mike Murphy. I'm Nick Murphy. We'll see you in the next top 10, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Does everyone hate us? Everyone hates us now. I don't like doing that. Everyone hates us. If you don't hate us, please subscribe to us. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Do it. (laughs) Share it around, indeed. We're sorry we broke your hearts. It's not our fault. If you want to see a less controversial top 10, you can check it out over here. Sure. If you want to see another cool video, it'll be right down there. And again, turn the bell on and subscribe, my friends. We love you. We promise we do. We're sorry we hate your games.